Mike McCann from Premier. Good to be speaking good with to, you again. Good to chat with you, too. All right. Well, I guess the first question is the, the obvious one. Tell us why this is such an important video set for uh, classic rock fans to be uh, considering. Well, first of all, you would think it's a, a, a impossible in this day and age that there could be a, a, a 12 hours of great concert performances you've never seen unless you happen to be in front of a TV one time because everything is out on video, you think. But these great concerts that took place between 1986 and 1998 were never made available for home enjoyment. And the reason for that is very simple. Um, back in 1985, when Bob Geldof did the wonderful Live Aid, he tried to make Live Aid a little special and said, hey, let's not put it out on audio or home video. Let's just make it one time on TV, and that'll be it. Now, um, when Amnesty International started doing the human rights concerts in 1986 and then carrying on in the later years, they kind of followed the same path as Bob Geldof. They said, let's just do it one time on TV and put it on the shelf. Now, spool forward to uh, 20th anniversary of Live Aid, and Bob Geldof changed his mind and said, you know what, maybe Live Aid should be made available, and he remastered everything and put it out on DVD. Uh, he said, you know, there's people that are bootlegging and pirating this stuff, and the, the, it never looks good because it's just taped by people from a VHS of TV, and uh, the charity's not benefiting. And that gave me an idea. I thought, you know what? We at Amnesty International have got all these fantastic concerts with U2 and The Police and Bruce Springsteen and Lou Reed, and no one's seen these stuff, this, this stuff for 20 years and more. Let's do the same thing. So I made it my task to uh, uh, find all the tapes that were scattered to the four winds, get them digitally remastered, get the picture and audio the best it could be, and create a DVD box set. I was going to say, and also because you, you are talking about shows that are 15 to 25 years ago, uh, you're capturing a lot of uh, classic legends and uh, uh, really at the peak of their uh, careers, not a Bruce Springsteen uh, in his 60s, but a Bruce Springsteen uh, in his late 30s or 40s. So you, you've got them at a different time and a, and, a, and a different point in their lives. That is very true. I mean, speaking on behalf of the over 60s and having just seen Bruce Springsteen recently, he still rocks pretty hard for, for an old timer. Uh, but no, you're absolutely right um, that, that when you got Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band on tour in 1988, they were at an absolute peak. Uh, same thing with the police. The police had gone on hiatus uh, in around 1982-83. So eight, 1986, they reunited just for Amnesty International, and it's spectacular. And you 2 this is before Joshua Tree, just as they're rising up to their very peak. So you get these performances. They are unbelievable. You're capturing them at an absolute point of essence. Well, that's marvelous. And on top of that, uh, as the press release notes, you've added some new interviews to it, so it's uh, uh, not just the classic performances, but you have, obviously, the artists talking about being on stage on those very special occasions. Yes, to me. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an obsessive fan myself. So uh, for me, it's not enough just to have the concerts, good though, uh, though they are. I want to know background. I want to know what the artists feel today. So I made it my mission to go to, no, I couldn't go to every artist, but to some of the biggest artists. Um, and I reached to Sting and Bono and Peter Gabriel, and they all gave fantastic interviews but there was one other interview I wanted, and that was the boss. I had to have Bruce Springsteen. Now, I'm sure you know, Bruce just doesn't do a lot of interviews in front of cameras. That's not his thing. Now, I don't know why, because he's a great interview, but he just doesn't do that very much. But I dogged Bruce for about three or four years, saying it was important to do. And Bruce has never wavered in his support of Amnesty. It's just he doesn't like sitting in front of a camera and being interviewed by a crazy guy like me. But finally, I persuaded Bruce to do it, and the interview he gives is phenomenal. I mean, really great insights, great thoughtful answers about what he was feeling at the time and about some of the memories he had of those concerts. Some of them are very, uh, really profound, and some of them are very funny. Like, it shares a memory about when he was playing solo just acoustically and the, uh, the, the producer of one of the shows said, we'd like you to go on after Led Zeppelin. And he said, Led Zeppelin, I can't, you know, I just got standing here with an acoustic guitar. I'm not going to go on after Led Zeppelin. How about I go on before Led Zeppelin? Very, very funny story. I <laughs> it certainly is. 
some somebody was asleep at, asleep at the wheel, and happily Bruce was uh, the one who was alert on that. Uh, it is a I'm I'm gathering a, a bit of a pricey set uh, with six DVDs in there. Is there a highlights package or or some kind of uh, compilation that's more budget price for those whose uh, budgets are a little tighter in these uh, in these days? Well, there will. Uh, I believe next year there will be a single disc DVD highlight coming out. But of course, in this day and age, uh, a lot of if you go on uh, 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 places such as Amazon, you find that the prices come tumbling down from the uh, uh, the set list price. So that does happen. The thing about this is, though, it, I realize that I'm going against the grain. We're in an era where people are watching 30-second blips on their electric toothbrush, and I come up with a 17-hour six-disc DVD set. But I would say that it is such a phenomenal set for those of us who love music. And by the way, the reason why it's 17 hours is there's 12 hours of concerts, but there's five hours of bonus material. And some of the bonus material you will never find anywhere else. It's not on YouTube or anything. For example, Peter Gabriel was a great fan of home videos. He was always making a home movie. And I managed to find his long-lost tapes from the 1986 tour, and we've made those into a feature on the DVD, including an amazing jam session with Bono and Larry from U2 and guys from Peter Gabriel and Lou Reed's bands jamming late night in a hotel bar on the tour. Amazing stuff. Um, we also uh, uh, got some, uh, 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 as well as the interviews, I thought it would be interesting to show that Amnesty has continued to have support from the music community after the last of the concerts, because the last big concert was in 1998. But since then, Amnesty has done some wonderful albums of John Lennon songs and Bob Dylan songs. So I got the artists who did videos for those to be part of it. So you get Green Day, you get Coldplay, Mumford and Sons, you get um, uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Joe Perry and Seal and Jeff Beck and Pete Townsend. So, you know, it's a bumper pack. I mean, it's, it's the perfect st uh, stocking stuff. I mean, though, but with six discs, it's a, you need a really big stocking to stuff it into. Well, you really, you really do, and uh, I, I commend you on, on doing all you can to go, uh, give the uh, audience and, and give the fans some, some real value there, and uh, I think it's going to show. And I think also you made a good point. You know, this is an era where people are watching videos on, on phones and on tablets and with earbuds. This certainly sounds like the kind of... Uh, program, you're going to want to see on the biggest screen possible with the biggest sound system possible. Kind of like old-fashioned old fashioned rock and roll where you want it to be big and loud and not to be, you know, tiny and, and, and uh, quiet. Well, absolutely. Listen, I, I still remember when I got, um, uh, 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 I think it was uh, John Lennon put out a, a, a single um, that said, uh, was Cold Turkey, on, and on it it said in very big letters, Play Loud. Um, and I used to play it loud. My mum and dad would be screaming, turn that down. But I like rock and roll to be played loud. I like it on a big screen. Um, you know, I think if you want to watch it on your phone or something like that, that's fine. But you know what? This deserves, if you've got Bruce Springsteen and you 2 um, uh, 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 and the police uh, and Zeppelin, you want to enjoy it big time. Um, now, we even put together a website called uh, Human Rights Concerts. Dot com, where we give the full history and background, and uh, you can sample some of the clips from the film uh, and, and just get a sense of how big the whole project really is. Well, again, Martin, uh, you've really done a great job of, uh, of explaining it all and uh, uh, making the fans excited about this uh, video release. And let's, let's be real, we are heading you know, towards the holiday season. The Hanukkah comes early this year, so for... Those of us who celebrate Hanukkah, you don't have a lot of time left, and this uh, certainly sounds like an awfully good uh, gift. And of course, with Christmas following just just a few weeks after, so I, I, I thank you for the good information and, and getting a lot of people excited about the human rights concerts. And uh, I'm happy we were able to join you this morning. Thanks very very much indeed. And I guess I'll be seeing you in uh, February at that uh, Fest for Beatles fans here in New York. Am I right? That's uh, that's um, among my many hats. I'm working on that as well. Yes, the. Uh, the Fest for Beatles fans on the exact 50th anniversary of uh, when the Beatles came. And it's even the same days of the week. In I know, it's very, it is very interesting for, for those of us of that age that um, that period of time, beginning with the JFK assassination, which was a Friday, November 22nd of 63, that uh, 
that November and the following February line up exactly on our calendars 50 years later. So when we talk about the Beatles arriving, it will be on Friday afternoon, and we talk about uh, the Ed Sullivan Show, it will be on Sunday night, and that's, that's kind of cool. It, it, it will certainly be, and I remember the impact. The impact, of course, was worldwide, though it happened here in the U.S., uh, where I'm uh, happy to live. Uh, uh, back in England, you can imagine the hometown pride in Britain to see our guys who we'd been following and who'd been successful in 1963, to see them conquer America, which was, you know, beyond the wildest dreams that a British band could conquer America, to see that happen was pretty sensational. Well, I know it's going to be a special weekend, and I'm, I'm, I know I'll be covering it for premiere, and I look forward to saying hello to you there again and, uh, and catching up on, on all things Beatles. Thank you, Mark. Thanks very much.